sewing a doll coat. I made this tutorial in October 2020. I published it in my Patreon channel, but I've decided to share it here with you all. You can pause the cards to read all the ingredients and tips I give you. Let's begin. Here are my fabrics. Print your PDF pattern pieces. The back pattern piece and the collar are traced on the fold. The rest need to be traced on doubled fabric. The PDF tells you how many pieces you need of each pattern piece. Mark all exterior pieces on the woolen fabric and then pin profusely before cutting. I used a waxy chalk to mark my woolen fabric as I find is the one that stays put best before I cut. Here are all the cut pattern pieces that I will be using to assemble this doll coat. First we're going to sew the elbow patches to the right side of the exterior sleeves. Then we're going to sew the collar right sides together, leaving the top open. And then we're going to sew the breast piece together, right sides together, leaving the side and top open. Here are the elbow patches sewn to the sleeves. Here's the collar the facings sewn to each other. Press all seams on the facings first with your fingers, open them up and then press them with your iron. Iron them from the wrong side. Clip the seam allowances close to the seam using your pink and shears. Make sure you don't cut through the seam. This will reduce bulk and make all the curves like flatter. Turn the color right side out. Work the round corners flat with your fingers first. When pressing the collar with the iron, press it with the wool side on bottom. Work the breast corner with your fingers first and then press with the iron. Press it from the wrong side or you will mar the corduroy. I am working all the pieces flat with my fingers first and then I use the iron to press the seams. Now use embroidery thread to do top stitching by hand. You will pierce both layers of fabric as you go. Try to make all your stitches even and don't pull too tight or you'll cinch the color. You just want the stitches to float on top of the fabric. I think it adds a very beautiful touch to the coat. Be 
careful that your threads don't bundle and bunch up together, making a knot. I am using three strands of embroidery floss. This is the finished top stitched collar, as well as the breast piece. Now baste the breast piece to the right side, to the right front along the top and side. You will sew right sides together the exterior fabric pattern pieces to the sleeves in this order. And you will do the same with the lining pieces. Press all seams open with your iron. Center the color at the center back of the exterior coat, pin and baste it in place. Now that is basted, we're going to sew the lining to the exterior of the coat. Right sides together, you're going to match the raw edges at the front and neckline. We're going to make a seam like this, but we are going to leave one inch open. We're going to leave one inch open, so mark it and place a pin so that you don't sew past this edge. This will allow us to make a pretty hem by hand later on. Match all the sleeve seams in both lining and exterior fabric. Once you make the seam, you can use your pinking shears to trim the seam allowances. Since this is a small coat, we have to be mindful of the bulk inside the seams. If you have trouble trimming the seam allowances at the color, use your regular sewing scissors. Now turn it right side out and press the seams flat. This is how the coat looks at this stage. Now we're going to sew the lining sleeve cuff edge to the exterior sleeve cuffs right sides together. So match each sleeve to its pair, pin them and sew them. The lining sleeves are shorter in length so that when you turn everything right side out they make a nice folded cuff on the inside of the sleeve. This is the tricky bit. You're going to grab the front edge of the coat and you're going to halfway turn it to the inside, matching the raw edges on the side seam. Once you pull the coat through, you're going to fold the sleeve, matching lining to lining and exterior fabric to exterior fabric. This will make more sense when you're doing it than when you're looking at it.
we want to do is a full continuous seam that goes from the lining all the way through the sleeve to the exterior of the coat. Pin everything in place and make sure to match the sleeve seams. That will give you a very professional touch. You are going to sew on the exterior side all the way all the way at the bottom, but you will only sew an inch from the raw edge on the lining side. Here I'm doing the other side. First I fold the sleeve, match the cuffs, match the underarm on the lining, and match the raw edges of the lining. Then I move to the exterior fabric. Here it is. I've left an inch opening on the lining side of the coat. You're going to clip the seams in these corners. So here is the coat. It looks like a mess. Try to press most of the seams open and magic, turn it right side out. You have to be a bit careful with the sleeves because they're very small and a little bulky. But just try to work out the sleeve in place by pulling on the lining and the woolen fabric. It will find its right spot by itself. And here you go. You have the sleeves and the side seams all sewn together in one go. Now we're going to finish the hem. Trim half an inch off the lining side of the coat. Now fold a quarter of an inch all along the exterior part of the coat and fold again till the fold meets the raw edge of the lining. Pin the hem in place and then sew it by hand. You can sew it in your sewing machine if you want but it will be seen from the outside. I like it best sewing it by hand as it gives a more polished look. And you can also work any fullness so that it lies nice and flat. Here's the hem finished. All we have to do now is sew buttons and sewn in snaps. I didn't have any buttons, so I use sequins as mock buttons. And this is how I sew sequins. three stitches per sequence. You want to make sure that your stitches are not showing on the lining side. You are merely sewing the sequence to the top fabric. If you're using buttons, of course, you would go through both layers of fabric.
since this is a double breasted coat, I think it looks prettier with four buttons or sequins. Once I finish my stitching, I like to finish my stitches with back stitches hidden in the seam. Now I'm gonna do the sewn in snaps. And this is how I make sure everything matches and looks pretty. I only sew the sewn in snaps to the lining of the coat. I try to make sure my stitches don't show on the front or the exterior or shell of the coat. I normally do two or three stitches per hole in the sewn in snaps. I am also using embroidery thread to sew the sewn in snaps. And again, I'm finishing my stitches by back stitching into the seam. Now I have to make sure this little snap, its counterpart is right, it's in the right place. So this is what I do. Once I have the exact spot with the snap needs to fit into, I place a pin and make a little stitch there and I will put the center of the other snap right above it. This time I'm sewing the metal snap just to the exterior fabric. I don't want my stitches to show on the underside of the coat. Again, finishing my stitching into the seam. I think this coat needs another snap. Right here. And a little bit of top stitching on the cuffs. And here is little palm modeling her new coat. I think she looks mighty pleased with herself. Palm is a 10 inch tall fairy that we make together during my online class. She's wearing the little penny shirt and overalls at 75% and knitted booties by Winter Lutes. You can find the PDF of the patterns I've used in my Etsy shop. Thank you for watching and see you soon.